Hey there guys. So I just want to do a quick project with you guys. This is something I've seen on the internet that I just wanted to uh, have a go at. So this uh, is taken from a guy called Anthony Kerkes, Kerkes, sorry I probably uh, butchered your name. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave a, a link to his YouTube. But yeah, essentially it's a a SNES controller, sorry I've taken it apart already, but it's a SNES controller that has a Raspberry Pi in it and it encases a a battery and uh, you can power on and connect a, a HDMI cable to the Pi and the Pi uh, attaches to the TV and then you're essentially got a, a, a console encased inside a controller so all you have to do is just take the controller around with you so this is what you need uh, so I'm the reason why I've this is a quick project is because I've got a spare original Pi Zero lying around so I thought I'd just make use of it so yeah you need a Pi Zero you need a 500c power boost board. Uh, obviously, you need a a SNES controller. I I think you're able to use the uh, a third party controller as well, uh, but for this one, I've used an official one. So anyway, that's the controller, and I've got a 2,000 milliamp battery. This is the a mini HDMI to HDMI, and this is a. So I'm gonna extend a USB so it attaches from there, and it's gonna come out of the controller somewhere. I've still gotta play around. So first of all, let's uh, let's crack on making it. So as you can see, you have this board here and you can use these wires and attach it to the GPI pins on the Pi. So with the Pi controller you have the white wire is the VCC, uh, the yellow wire is the clock, orange is a uh, latch, uh, red is data and brown is ground. So yeah, you can wire those these up to the Pi and then configure them using um, a script on RetroPi. I will explain that as I go on. So anyway, let's crack on with it. I'll leave all uh, diagrams and everything in the link uh, in the description below.
Okay, so I just realized that. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. Okay, so where the clip, uh, where the wires was on, it was on a on a clip that was clipped onto here. So now I realize I have to actually take this off and then connect it directly to the pins here. Hi there, so once you've got uh, RetroPie installed on an SD card, uh, insert it into your Raspberry Pi and uh, turn the system on. So as you can see I've got my, my unit exposed at the moment, uh, more on that later, um, but 
I've attached a, a USB dongle to this. Uh, this is powering my keyboard and a Wi-Fi con connector because my uh, Raspberry Pi is the original one so it doesn't have the Wi-Fi. So once you've got RetroPie loaded, So once you have it loaded, uh, currently, um, I know it's hard to see, but it says that no gamepads are detected. Uh, so that's because we've not installed the uh, correct drivers yet, uh, as it's a fresh install. So the first thing you need to do is set up your keyboard. So press the button and map your keyboard. Okay, so once that's done, go into RetroPie and you have to now set up your Wi-Fi. Once you've done that, exit out that. Go into RetroPie Setup. Go into Manage Packages and Manage Driver Packages. Scroll down to Game Con Driver and install from binary. So once that's done, go back, 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 and exit. Now what you want to do is exit out of Emulation Station, and this will bring you to a terminal. And so the next bit, uh, so currently there's a, a problem with uh, the current kernel of, uh, of the latest RetroPie uh, and it's not been updated yet. So uh, first of all, and this, this worked for me, uh, it might not work for uh, someone else, you might not need this part, but it worked for me. So. Um, I'm going to disable um, all the ra Raspberry Pi packages. So to do that, I'm going to put all the, all the writing in the description below as well, so you can ignore this for now. So once that's done, just reboot. Okay, so now it's time to set up your uh, GPIO to the controller. So again, you have to quit the emulation station. And then, uh, again, you can find this in the description below. So once that's done, hit enter. And sh that should just uh, map your uh, GPI pins to the controller and reboot the system. So once you're in a retro pie menu, uh, hit enter and you go on to configure input and enter. So you could probably see that it's recognized the gamepad now. So all you have to do is uh, set up the, uh, the gamepad and map your controls. So it's probably easier uh, to piece it together. So if I press press and hold a button, it recognizes that it's a SNES pad. So just input your, uh, and map your controls, so up. So if there's any uh, buttons that you don't want mapped, just press and hold it and it will just skip. So now you can control your controller. So the next thing to do is put some games on. So grab uh, a FAT32 formatted USB stick. So uh, you probably see, uh, you can't now, but what happens, there we go, it's uh, flashed a few times. Uh, that's to say that it has copied some files across. 
and what it would do, it would um, it would copy the, all the uh, emulators that are on the on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, so all you need to do is dump your ROMs in the necessary uh, emulator folder, and then once you put stick the USB stick back into the Raspberry Raspberry Pi, should pick up those ROMs and then just copy it across. So I loaded a few ROMs on there. It should blink a few times, and that's just to say that you've it's transferring some data across. Okay, so once that's done, I'm gonna switch off the uh, the machine and uh, reboot it, and it should hopefully appear. So once uh, RetroPie has loaded up, you can see that I've got another uh, menu here. That's Super Nintendo. So if you go in here, you can see that I've got a few games on there now. So if I click on one of them, it should just load up. And I just lost. Hey there guys. So thanks a lot for uh, making it this far in the video. So this is the, the final piece. I know first thing you're thinking of is I've changed a different case and that is very much true. Mainly because uh, the, the, the case that I was using previously had an issue fitting the, the case on properly. So I didn't have any choice. Uh, the the sides was coming out, and um, it just did not look nice. So I thought the best best things uh, was to do was to replace the case entirely. So that's what I did. Uh, so this is a uh, a third party uh, case. It's uh, almost a replica, apart from the um, the the logo in the center. But the position of the the, the controllers and everything. Um, was pretty much um, the same as it was on the original case, uh, apart from a few things. But anyway, let me um, explain what I did. So as I said, it's a it's a essentially a different case. Uh, I you can see that I've made things a bit more uh, neater. Uh, so you've got the charging, which is the same. Uh, this lead here. Oh, sorry. What I was supposed to also mention is that. Um, so the reason why the battery is situated on the outside is because um, I literally had no uh, room inside. So unfortunately it does stick on the outside. I really don't recommend that. Um, I think it's a bit dangerous. I think what would be great if I was to 3D print something on top of it or um, if you do have a 3D printer and you're good at 3D modeling that you can integrate a, uh, a whole back case that um, holds the battery in place. Uh, alternatively, you can get you can get a smaller uh, uh, battery. Uh, this is a 2000 milliamp battery. Um, there are 500 milliamp ba batteries that are much smaller and should be able to fit inside here. Uh, I've not tried that obviously, so I mean, do give it a go. And hopefully you have um, better better luck than I have. Also, you can see this little compartment here that I had to chop out. I only just realised that until I started putting it all together, and I for some reason had this, and it's still kind of bulging as well. Uh, but it was much bigger than this. I had a, much, a really big uh, gap here, and I realised that it was the this component here, which is the for the battery. Uh, so I essentially had to 
cut that piece out uh, to fit it all in. Also as well, on the top, uh, I, I removed the, um, uh, the power. It now sits on the side. I've also, um, I should really do it, but um, basically there was a USB uh, access here. Um, uh, the reason why I took that away was because, uh, as you know previously, I had a, oops, sorry. Uh, so the idea was that there would be an extension running from the the um, micro USB to a full size USB which would be located on the side. Uh, for some reason it didn't work for me. Every time I uh, played around with it it didn't work and I didn't have extra parts so I ended up <coughs> scrapping that idea entirely. So again you should probably have a better chance than I, I had so best of luck to you. Um, also that remains the same. The HDMI cable is uh, comes out of the uh, of the controller. Okay, so looking inside. So uh, I do recommend the the screws to leave in uh, are this one and this one. I think in my previous video as well, uh, you're probably coming up to this point and thinking. Why did I not just do it from the uh, in my pr at the beginning? I'm really sorry. <laughs> uh, so before you do watch this, watch it entirely and then buy the parts so you can see where I went wrong. So anyway, uh, so the, the screws that are that are left in was these two and these two at the top as well. So. The battery is held on by a bit of Velcro, and this is what I used for the components as well. Okay, so I mean, uh, actually, let me take yeah, let me take this out as well. So the the third party board was slightly different. Uh, the only bit part that was mainly uh, the biggest problem was uh, these shoulder buttons here. So they fit inside here and there's two, essentially two plastic parts uh, that holds it in place. Um, uh, they didn't really fit well with the board so I ended up um, chopping them entirely. So let me just take these rubber bits out. These sh shoulder buttons. So uh, let me take these out as well. Whoops. Ah. So um, you can see most of the. Uh, most of these these prongs here I had to remove that's mainly because of the of the uh, the controller board and not using the third party one and um, so yeah you what I really really recommend is um, make this entirely make sure everything works and then place it on and just work out what areas you need to cut. I mean, I think uh, this is pretty much it. So it's it's these parts. Uh, ignore these parts if you've got the original one. That should fit fine. And there's a few parts here. Also, whoops. I will take a few pictures and show you uh, what I mean. So uh, with the with the uh, back of the case, um, these. Uh, from my previous um, step, I, there was like spirals that pushes the controller board up against the, the buttons here. They had something similar, there were prongs though, so yeah, do definitely recommend um, taking those off. And there's 
uh, a few bits that you need to take off in the middle and over here as well near the um, shoulder button. Should also mention about the shoulder button as well. Um, I actually did have to shave off a part of it. Actually, I think I may have shown that in the steps before. Probably have to look back on the video. Anyway, so that is about it. So things I do recommend is, yeah, just take your time, uh, measure parts uh, and, and see what needs cut in. Um, as I say, I'll leave some pictures of my, my build in the description below. Um, also, this is a great, um, a fun project to do, quick project to do. Um, things I would look out for though, I mean, everything is encased inside this, essentially this controller, you know, you've got um, a power booster here, you've got a, essentially a computer, uh, and then you have a battery. Having that all encased inside a, uh, a unit, it's going to be hot so I really don't recommend playing it for that long I mean like it's not gonna be that much of a problem but do keep in mind that these things do heat up so um, just be mindful about how long you play for um, and that's about it okay so I'm just gonna piece everything together and show you how everything comes together <laughs> Thanks for watching guys, please comment, like and subscribe and I'll see you next time, thanks.